get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Leif Larson. He's founder of Leif's Natural Body Care. He started the company over 23 years ago with with a $15,000 loan from his family. I found Leif's because I was on a constant search for a natural deodorant that actually worked. That's the key. You know, I've tried a lot of them. Most of them don't work. And because I was reading, there is a huge amount of toxicity in using regular deodorant. And I found a friend recommended Leif's and like this stuff actually works. And so I want to have you on Leif to tell your stories and your journey. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thanks for the opportunity to be on, Jeremy. So, Leif, I always ask with Inspired Insider, what's been the lowest point and then how you push through the tough time? I think the hardest part for me was going through a difficult divorce back in 1990. Uh, uh, three young children, just a personal struggle. Yeah. It was a uh, difficult divorce. It dragged on for a while. It was, it was fairly, a fairly contested divorce. Um, I was trying to, I was just starting my business um, and I was, uh, didn't, I didn't say really settle until early, until early, uh, till the mid nineties. And there I was very few resources trying to start my business, traveling across the state, um, being a single father with three young children. Jeez. It was, it was a challenge. How do you do that? Yeah. I, 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 I scheduled my travel. I traveled as the state as a sales rep and I scheduled my travel when they, my children were with their mom, and when I and so I would I'm, and, and I go leave on Monday and come back on Wednesday or Thursday from a trip. So on my weekend, I'd be there for them. A couple of times I couldn't get back. They, I couldn't get back into town in time from when school got out. So I'd arrange to call the local taxi cab company, and the cab company said, "Yeah, we, you can set up an account, and we'll just transport your kids from school home, and uh, um, that's fine." So I, I, I arranged those kinds of things, but. It was a it was a very difficult uh, personal time for me, and I felt it's the right thing I did. I had to do it, but my kids were very young, and I was just very, uh, you know, it's, it was just it was, it was it was hard to make that decision. But I, I I felt it for my own personal health and well being. I had to I had to move forward, and have no re- no regrets today um, after having done that. My kids are all growing up and, and pretty happy and pretty healthy. You know, that's tough to do at any point, probably however, you know, old the, the children are to, to go through something like that. Well, they, they used to say that if you're, if you're starting a business, you need to have at least one stable uh, source of income. Sure. And I didn't have that because I was single. So it was just my income. So there were times when I remember having to, uh, we'd, I'd, I'd wash the clothes in the laundromat and I would just hang dry everything. Uh, because I didn't have the, the the extra coins to put them in the the, the, the dryer, wow. I remember the bath towels when they hang dry like that. They would just get so stiff and so coarse that when you would first use a bath towel, it didn't feel very good. But you know, I, it, when one does what they have to do, yeah, so that's that's how I looked at it. That's amazing. Yeah, I appreciate. You. That's a tough thing to share. I appreciate you sharing that because that's the reality, right? For people, there's it's not just your you have a business, you are dealing with personal things, you know, along with building your business, you know, everybody goes through struggles like that. I'm not the only one, different kinds of struggles, of course, um, people go through financial marriage. um, What do you, what advice do you give to someone? Let's say right now they're building their business and they're going through a divorce situation. How did you mentally get through it? You know, it's not easy. It, it's not. I, you know, my suggestion is to try to stay focused. Um, like, did you have someone that you called, like, this person's going to knock some sense into me when you're you're feeling, like, overwhelmed? Or what did you, what did you do? Because I would feel like, for me, overwhelmed would, like, 
overtake me at that point, you know? I, I had some, some good friends that I could lean on that could help advise me and, and when I was upset, calm me down and teach sense and help me talk through my stuff and also um, listen to me talk about my business because my business was what was really the thing that was propelling me forward and, and, and creating sort of my inspiration to keep going. And they were supportive and said, Leif, look at the achievements. You've got this new account. You've got that new account. You're launching this. Those kinds of things I think were were really important. And I think that's, I think we all we all have those things and we need to to take advantage of those opportunities where we got a, a friend and listening ear that can can help that can help sort of share help us as we share our, our things. But I think everybody goes through their, their tough times and and um, I think that builds character. I mean, I, I really think it does. I think I, I not having gone through that, I'm sure I would have been, I'd be a different person today. And I although at the time I wasn't I wasn't grateful for doing. Yeah, I would like I don't yeah I wish this on my enemy type of thing. Which, it's just one of those things that I think uh, it, it helps helps me it gives me a, a better perspective now, especially when I see people going through that. I mean, I'm much more empathetic and much more understanding um, for others. Yeah. So on the flip side, Leif, what's been one of the proudest moments? I think when we hit the million dollar sales mark, mm. like, um, that was that was that was a that, that was an achievement that made me very proud. I mean, I, I said to myself, I can't can't believe I'm selling. A million dollars worth of product. I mean, it's just that is I've amazing. In all these years, and I, I started in my bedroom and waiting for that fax machine to ring, and I, there were times I couldn't pay myself. I had to. I was late on paying my rent, and then when I bought a house, I, I had a struggle with the mortgage payment and taking care of my. You know, all those kinds of things. Yeah. Starting out, and you're you're, you're young, and you don't have deep pockets. But I think hitting that at mark was really significant for me because it told me that. Um, all this blood, sweat, and tears that I've gone yeah. through is is uh, is really paying for itself. And, yeah. and, and you know, we're continuing to see significant growth year over year. Yeah. So it allows us to keep growing, and you know, we think we're we we, we hope to be a, a significant, even a larger brand in the natural marketplace. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because you know people only see presently what things look like with this probably nice, you know commercial space and everything else and everything systemized and they don't realize you were in your bedroom with a fax machine and packing products I, I want that to be a part of your new employee welcome implementation like they should know where this started and you know so they don't take it for granted that oh you walk into this nice commercial facility you know what I mean yeah and I walk into companies that are small and growing, and I look at some of the, if they have a really fancy office. I say, you know, I wonder um, they're spending a lot of money on glitz and the look. Um, but really, I mean, I think what's important is put the money behind the brand and, and the product. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the 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 wealth and the resources will come will will, will, will come eventually. Yeah. I think the thing I would say for people starting up is is the importance of having a, a good, healthy daily routine. Yeah, I, that's, I want to ask what your daily routine is actually with specifically with some of maybe the health-related products, type of yeah. supplements, food. What do, you, what do you do daily? I eat healthy. I eat you know, a yogurt, blueberries, and, and, and cereal in the morning. I eat healthy lunch. I, I'm not a vegetarian. I do eat meat um, at night, but I'm really careful what I eat. I, uh, I work out. I work out four to five times a week. My my wife says, you know, the gym is your mistress, and I said, yeah, it's my. Friend. It's also my time to be by myself. Hmm. I can get inside my head. I can read. I can do those kind of things. I, no one's going to talk to me. The phone's not going to ring. I don't have to worry about answering an email. I'm there with there with, with just myself and having that conversation that one has with themselves about things, work through stuff. But I make sure I go to the gym. Four what do you do? Do you do weights, cardiovascular? What do you? Weights twice a twice a mm -hmm. week. I do cardio, bike or run or something. Mm -hmm. I used to run. I used to do some long runs. I used to do some half marathons. Um, but uh, as I get older, it's more and more difficult for my body to hold up with those long pounding runs. So, right. but for years I've been doing. I started about. I think when I started my business, I started doing a regular workout routine, and I, I can't I can't emphasize how important it is 
just to keep you healthy. And it, also, it, you know, it's 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 emotionally it clears your head, it gives you a, a clear it's head. Stress relief, yeah. Yeah, it makes you, you can think more clearly and make better decisions when your when your head is, has been cleared. And sleep. I also am a big believer that these guys who say they get by in four and five hours of sleep. No, I don't buy that. <laughs> Got to get a good, healthy night's rest. Really be healthy. So, do you take any vitamin supplements? I do take vitamins. I take a, a daily. I take the calcium. I, I take a vitamin D. I take a uh, just a, a sort of general supplements. A handful of general supplements every day. Yeah. So, what? Who are some of your mentors that you lean on when you need business advice these days? And what what do they tell you? You know, I think there, there's a couple of mentors out there. Um, one would be my uh, my grandfather, hmm. O.E.T. Tweet, who I never met, who, my, who was my mother's father, very successful farmer, um, businessman. Um, and she would always tell me stories about him when I was growing up. And I kind of see myself as, as kind of following in his footsteps. A smart businessman, he looked around to see where there was an opportunity. Uh, he was a very honest businessman. He used to, um, she said, she would tell me that he would take the uh, c- cattle to market, the way you would sell your cattle back then, but you put them on the train and you'd ride the train from, from South Dakota to Chicago, which is like a two, two day train ride. And he would wear a suit on that train ride. Really? A farmer with, you know, cattle in the, in the, in the back of the train was wearing a suit because he, he just saw himself as a su- successful businessman mm. and he dressed like one and, and he was, he, he very much was one. So he was, I think, um, somebody who was a good mentor. I think my uh, the, the president of my high school, um, that was a kind of a special, it was a private high school that had gone through a serious transformation from being almost a monastery school to my freshman year. They were bringing inner city kids from around the country. It was a Christian high school, but the notion being is troubled kids that don't have homes or have difficult homes. It was a residential high school. We'd bring them in and... and the, guy named Bob Nervy had started or had just come in as as the new president. He was a person that just loved and accepted everybody who was out there, no matter what background, no matter how much trouble you were in, no matter what kind of person you were. He he just felt that if we love you and care for you, you're going to try to be an okay person. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget just watching how he operated. And people loved him. Everybody that ever met the guy loved and respected him uh, just because of his, his outgoing approach. Short, heavy set, balding guy was just, um, just he wasn't just loving, but he respected people. Yeah. And even unruly freshmen, sophomores in high school that should have been put in a juvenile discipline. T- yeah. He took them in and he, he, so he, he showed them there's another way. And he's a kid who had never had really anybody give him any guidance and support. Um, but that, that showed me the power of change that, that, that the human being can bring to others. And I think that was something that was just, has always stuck with me throughout life. Yeah. What about these days? Who do you turn to if you want some kind of uh, advice on the business? That you, you know, trust? that's, uh, there's, there are uh, Branson. I think Branson is an amazing businessman. I really respect what he's done. Um, I just, I don't know how he's done that. Um, I think uh, people who've sort of created small businesses and made them grow um, out there, there's a lot of them out there. I really respect and admire what they've done, how they've done it. I, uh, one guy that I really admire and respect is uh, Darren Hardy with Success Magazine. Mm. Read his stuff and, I, you know, he just shares information and knowledge and helps inspire me to become a better person and more effective in what I do and how I deal with people mm-hmm. like he else. And it's not that he's telling you what to do or how to do it. He's sharing others that are successful right. and, and how, what they, what, what they encourage you to consider doing or what they guidance and support or suggestions. Yeah. I, I think Darren is, as uh, I just admire what he's done, how he's built that, that whole enterprise up in terms of uh, teaching people. And I, I get very inspired and even, even, and I, I, I share the magazines with my, with my children who are in their twenties. And sometimes they get really upset about their, they work for, well, one son works for a car dealership and he said that they have their favorites and, and then the favorites get all the leads and nobody else does and how unfair it is. And I say, you know, read success magazine. You got to believe in yourself. 
if the place is not it's so if it's so uncomfortable to work for this place, go out and find another job. There's other other opportunities. Don't feel you're stuck. Right. But that's what success. I think inspires me and inspires others. Yeah. You can do whatever you set out to do. You have to believe in yourself. Yeah, Leif, this has been absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate it. I have one last question for you. Um, but first, where can we send people? Where should they check out Leif's products? Um, as we mentioned, the health food stores like the Whole Foods. And if they if they if they're in a store and the product isn't available, most health food stores can order through their distributor because we're listed with all the major distributors mm-hmm. at Leifs.com, L-A-F-E-S.com. And if that website Sometimes it'll give you a glitch. Um, just call the 800 number. Our customer service people will be glad to help you over the phone if the order doesn't go through on a website. But uh, that's where we are. We're out there, and you can yeah. you find us. Leifs, L-A-F-E-S dot com. So last question, Leif, is so what are you most excited about for the future of Leifs? I, I'm excited about... The new product launches that we're, we're going to be doing this fall, the new wet shampoo. Can you talk about all, all the dry shampoo? It's, it's the Earthly Delight, the, the company we purchased. We're going to relaunch it with a different brand, a different aroma, and put it in a tube, not a bottle. So it's going to be kind of a different kind of a product. And we're going to create a, a, a hair care system because that's what people really need when it comes to hair care. Um, that's our number one launch. Our second one is going to be the, the Slow Grow product. That um, It's innovative. People are looking for a product like that. Um, women especially who shave their legs, shave their underarms. They, we've talked this thing, this, this idea for probably a year and people say phenomenal idea. I can go buy the stuff at the salon for $35 and it's full of chemicals or hopefully I can buy it from you for a fraction of that and it's all natural. Yeah. So it's, it's our making products that people feel good about that they will use and they'll share and knowing it's going to make for a, a healthier individual and a healthier society, yeah. less you know, less disease, less cancer, less of those kinds of things because we aren't introducing toxic chemicals. Right. Body. Yeah. Well, I am a customer and a fan, so I really appreciate it. Like, thank you so much, Jeremy. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you again. So you were saying the craziest thing you forgot to mention. So go ahead. I uh, I had a. Uh, uh, we were snagged in a lawsuit a few years ago around the word organic. Hmm. Uh, they were suing, uh, they sued a whole number of companies um, because they were claiming their product was organic, but there was nothing in the product that was organic certified. Um, we use the term organic in our in our brand, our brand mark, which is different than used in. And so we were making a claim about the product. It was simply in our grand, brand mark. But we were snagged in this law, not lawsuit nonetheless with some of the biggest brands of natural out there. Um, the, we hired the legal counsel. We were spending tons and tons of money. They are about five or six small brands, and they're, they're really the big, big brands of natural. And we all had the same legal counsel, folks working together. We were all being charged the same fees. And we said, we, we, we the smaller brands were saying, listen, we're a tenth, a twentieth the size of these big folks, and you want us to settle this lawsuit for $20,000. For me to write a check for $20,000 is a big deal. If you're a $50 million brand, a $20,000 check is nothing. So anyway, so it dragged on for it, on and on and on. And um, finally, I just got to the end of it. And I, I fired my legal counsel. And I came back to me and said, you know, like, that was the smartest. He, he was really nice. He came back on the private side. He said, it was, you, you were smart to fire me because it wasn't worth you paying for it. It's, although it's illegal for you not to have legal counsel, in a California lawsuit, you were smart to fire me because you were getting, it was going nowhere and you, you were going to be charged these huge fees. So I went on for a while longer and I was just dealt with the people directly. Finally, I got really upset and I said, to, I, I decided, I'm just going to, I don't know, something happened that day and I was just tired of this whole lawsuit dragging on and, and more, more legal fees. Um, the, the opposing counsel was trying to get us to pay additional fees. So I went down to, to uh, the health foods where I bought an organic, uh, turn up and I, I put it in a FedEx envelope and I overnighted it to the lead counsel. I says, you just can't squeeze blood out of a fucking turn up. <laughs> I, I was just so angry that we this thing dragged on and uh, he got it. And I called him two days later and I said, you know, I'm just going to settle this for $500. His assistant was got on the phone. He said, I've never seen anything like that before. He agreed to settle. 
So That's amazing. It was it was just one of those kind of things where <laughs> I, we I just I, I I you know intuitively I had to do something, and I right. was so frustrated by this process. It was dragging me down emotionally. The financial hit was becoming more significant. Um, so don't be afraid to try something outlandish and crazy no. because. And in the end, the court ruled that you can use the word organic. Uh, they validated our position, like, which is organic in your brand mark is fine. So Tens of thousands of dollars later. You know, you seem like one of the nicest people. So if you were extremely upset, it must have been just the worst situation. So. <laughs> I was. I was quite upset. Wow. I love that. Send fat. If you were in trouble, just send someone a turn up and put the note. Yeah, can't right. squeeze blood from a turnip. Yeah. Thank you, Leif. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thought I'd mention that. So, what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.